I don't know, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting people that looked more like down on their luck and like downtrodden. Well, my pride is just people can look at you and think you're bluffing. I'm not gonna look beat up to where I'm not brushing or shaving my hair or not getting my nails cut because people would think, oh man, you're all groomed out, you're not homeless. But uh, I am homeless. That's the hardest thing people don't understand. About I thought it would just be soup. I mean, I didn't think it would be like an actual full-blown meal, which is, is awesome that they do that. I don't know, I, f I find a weird satisfaction with get with washing the, the pans and the pots and stuff. So I do that, and I serve, and so I That's Adrian, a 23-year-old volunteer at Tony's Kitchen, a soup kitchen in Montclair, New Jersey. Before him, you heard Amelia, another volunteer, and Wilfred, a guest at the kitchen. These are just a few of the people that make up the community of Tony's. People who find themselves here for all kinds of reasons, some a little complicated. Like Adrian. Adrian's a veteran of the Marines who lost his legs four years ago, serving in Afghanistan. He's a college student now, which is how we heard about Tony's. Uh, well, basically, I got in trouble at school because I got in a fight. And then my advisor hooked me up with this Catholic group uh, at at my school at Montclair State and they do various stuff and I just kind of I like the place a lot like yeah you know I got a rough situation but other people out there could have equally if not more rough situations and I think that them seeing me walking around helping out with no legs is making them say the same thing in their head like oh this is bad that's pretty bad too everybody's stuff can be bad to a certain everything's relative we'll hear more about Adrian when he'll be featured in a series of upcoming profiles of members of the Tony's community. I'm also a member of the Tony's community. I come in on Sundays and deliver donations from local food markets. Over the years, I've met remarkable people, volunteers and guests, including some who have been coming to Tony's since they were children. I was raised by the librarians, I was raised by the church, I was raised by the Tony's, you know, so I've been coming here for a very long time. You know, me, my, my um, grandma, we didn't have enough money for food, so she would send me two Tonys and we'll eat here. That was Frank. Lisa has been coming here most of her adult life, often bringing meals back for her mother. She doesn't come up here because she cannot walk, so I bring food back for her. That's what I do. Since um, uh, 1992, I got friends up here, good friends. I walk up all the way up here. I live in Belleville. It takes me a good while, but I like to walk. I go over creation. Then there are folks like Wilfred. Wilfred, also a veteran, was working as an engineer until he found himself homeless and living in a shelter after a domestic disturbance just a few weeks before we met. I worked for Google. I did contracts for Google. I have an engineering degree. But, uh, you know, you can't be an engineer if you don't have a car. <laughs> you know, for me, it's like three weeks ago, you know, I got in a situation that got me to be homeless. Just like, it was instant, so I had to pack my backpack and leave my house. You know, he was in Tora Bora, he was in Iraq, and they had bullets flying over you and you were laughing, you know. But I've been through major stuff. Major stuff to a point like, nothing humbles me. I like to say I'm always next to fearless, I didn't care. I know, but there's a time where it just humbles. The kitchen is a kind of nexus of needs, both to give and to receive. People seem to recognize their own and others' vulnerabilities amidst the primacy and warmth of food. That's what happened to Paul, who explains how Pat, a Tony's volunteer, came to play a critical role in his life. My job, um, I worked for Colgate Palmolive, so, and then the company's moving out of state, and they're closing that facility, and then I just was getting sick a lot, and at the time I didn't know what was going on. I had so many things, I have diabetes and blood pressure, heart problems, I've had a heart attack five years ago. Pat got to know me more on a personal side because one day she knows my blood pressure was extremely high and um, she helped me out 
getting to the hospital and help me out with my meds and stuff because I was uninsured at the time. Since then, it developed even further because then I discovered I had cancer. So that's my next battle. <laughs> so here it is, somebody who doesn't know me, per se, who's, you know, making sure that I'm okay. So you forge friendships that way. Some guests will find temporary respite at Tony's, then taking advantage of some of the supportive health, housing, and employment services the kitchen offers, they'll become better able to manage independently, and they'll move on. But many will eat the four meals a week offered here for the rest of their lives, assuming Tony's is still around. And it looks like it will be. It's hard to conceive of the need disappearing anytime soon. Fortunately, there's no shortage of volunteers. In fact, there's often a waiting list. Because while Montclair is home to many who struggle and for whom Tony's is an essential resource, it's also home to individuals who have plenty and who are eager to give and to teach their children about giving. Individuals like Sonia and her dad, Joel. I help with babies also, and I also help with cats. I'm a mother's helper and I'm a cat sitter. My name is Sonia. I am eight. Tony's Kitchen is the best fun. Um, I've been on the stove for a long time. It's wonderful. It's really nice to yeah, it's fun. serve the community and see Sonia learning about helping others who are less fortunate. And today them. there was someone special. He usually walks around on the streets, but today it was his birthday, we celebrated it, and I brought the cake to him. He blew up the candles. I'm Eleanor Meeks. I produced Listening in the Kitchen with Noah Levinson and with help from Annabella Poland, Craig Gorbanoff, and Sarah Murphy at Montclair State University's WMSC Radio. Thanks to Debbie Gallant and Joe Amdidis at the Center for Cooperative Media and to bensound.com for music. Thanks to Ann Mernon, Veronique Ramsey, Pat Moulton, Al Prieto, and all the guests and volunteers at Tony's Kitchen. For more information about Tony's, go to tk.slechurch.org.